Good day, first world travellers, and welcome back. Today is quite a short, unplanned video that I just wanted to do because I've just done something that I thought it would be worthwhile sharing with you, something that potentially you might want to do if you come to Hiroshima. So I'm in the Peace Park. It is February the 6th, I think. Yes, it is, and it's very cold, as you can probably tell. So I've just been to somewhere quite close to the Peace Park called Social Book Cafe. Now, on the 6th of every month, there is an opportunity for you to speak to actual survivors from the Hiroshima atomic bomb, which is fascinating, interesting. You know, you can go to the museum, which is just literally over there, but I think you can get a completely different perspective by actually speaking to someone that actually has experience of what happened. I didn't actually film what we were talking about. There was basically three of us and the guy, um, and... I, I didn't think it would be respectful me filming for YouTube, so I thought I would just talk about it instead. Now, this guy was called Takaki. Apologies if his name is wrong. Um, also goes by the name of James. He's 80 years old, um, and he was six years old at the time of the bombing in 1945. Basically, he lived very close to where I am now, uh, a couple of hundred metres from the hypo centre where the bomb exploded. And his dad had some sort of premonition or hunch about six months before the bomb exploded so in about the March of that year he decided to move his family about 10 kilometers from Hiroshima and all his other family like aunts cousins uncles they stayed in the area so because he was 10 kilometers away he wasn't directly affected by the bomb because obviously he would be dead and he was quite he was quite clear on the fact that his other family who were here he actually his words were they were reduced to white dust so they were vaporized and you know that was quite unsettling to hear but that's the truth of the matter that's what happened and you know his dad worked at the NHK broadcasting station which is very close and from what I can understand from what he was saying obviously his English wasn't fantastic um, his basically what happened was uh, the US Army would broadcast US propaganda over the Japanese radio stations and it was his dad's responsibility to block this out and, and play other stuff over the top of it and when the bomb went off he was in the broadcasting station which is one kilometre from the hypo centre and he survived um, and uh, you know he then talked about his story of helping survivors things like that and there's actually a thing which i'll show you now which he gave us it's like a manga style cartoon if you like of the story of what his dad did which is which was brilliant and another thing that he described that was quite unsettling as well that was that after the bombing people were basically classified into four categories number one the first one being people that were actually directly affected by the bomb number two were people like him who were not in the direct vicinity but were still affected by radiation etc the third one were people, were women that were pregnant, basically, and the baby, baby was obviously affected by radiation. And the fourth category are people that weren't in the direct area completely at all, but then came here afterwards, uh, sometime after, and were still affected by radiation. And the, again, unsettling thing is that every six months he has to go to the doctor. He has like a certificate to show that he's one of these categories, and he has to have a checkup every six months for obviously health reasons to check that there's no... Uh, you know negative effects of the radiation all these years later so uh, you know and then the other thing about him as well was that he after all this happened he became the managing director of Mazda in New Zealand um, and as a result of that he was able to travel all over the world and when people heard that he was from Hiroshima they basically would ask him all about it and as a result of that he then became kind of a speaker and his really sole aim in life now is to educate younger people on what happened and the fact that nuclear weapons should not happen at all. He spoke in Parliament in the UK, he's spoken at the UN in America. Um, so overall it was just um, quite humbling I think to meet someone that's been through that experience and I would really recommend you coming here. All of the details um, are in the description below if you would like to come here. It's on the 6th of every month, Social Book Cafe. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. So um, I hope you've enjoyed learning, well not enjoyed, but I hope you've learned a bit more about um, what happened on that day um, and what you can actually get from actually speaking to someone who, were, who was, who has experience of it and who was involved. And obviously this is kind of a once in a lifetime thing because, you know, he's 80 years old, he's not going to be around forever and neither are all the other people who were survivors. So it's a great opportunity to 
be able to uh, hear from someone who was involved. So yeah, that's that video. So I'm going to go back to my hostel so I'm frozen. Um, I will catch you later.